sorry. Okay, we're uh, now joined by the winner of today's Credit Karma Money 250, and that is driver of the number 54 Toyota for Joe Gibbs Racing, and that's Kyle Bush, potentially his last ever NASCAR Xfinity Series press conference. Um, talk about that one, and you just nodded. Is, is this the last one? Yeah, it's, um, you know, not quite the, the win we were hoping for. You know, a little bit of a somber win, I guess. You know, not just... Um, for, uh, for for it being the last one, but for the way it kind of happened, you know, just really hate it for my teammate, uh, Daniel Hemrick there on the front stretch, just trying to get to him, trying to push him, yeah, trying to hit him and get him moving forward. And uh, we hit that bump in the track right at the same time and it kind of juked his car and then he was across traffic, I guess. And so ended up wrecked, which that was not, uh, not at all how I first saw that going. Um, but, you know, we, uh, we were able to push our way through and, and get uh, onto victory lane. So uh, good to get JGR in victory lane, Toyota, uh, M&Ms and um, you know Twix, uh, Skittles, obviously with uh, extra gum on there today. Them being close nearby was was really special too. With as many different vendor partners as we've had on the car this year, um, you know feels good to have uh, a five for five season like that with uh, with all those different sponsors. Thanks to M&Ms. So um, yeah, I mean that this is this is it. You never say never, but um, this was the last one. So um, last scheduled run. We'll uh, hang it up and. Do something else on Saturdays. Okay, thank you, Kyle. If you have a question for Kyle, please raise your hand. We'll get your mic. We'll start right here in the front and then go to Peter. Dominic, Dominic Otto going with the racing experts, ESPN Radio, Albuquerque. When you look back on this race at any point in time, what do you think you're going to remember the most about it? Just this one? Yeah, just this final confirmed start. Um, I mean, for me, just, you know, when we were out front, we were really good. Um, you know, I felt like I could hold my own to the rest of the field out front. Uh, we had a fast car. And then when I got behind Hemrick there, um, I ran him down for a little bit, and then he had the bottom plugged up really good, and he was tracking the line real well that I just couldn't make up any time on him following him. So I tried to go different lanes and, uh, and get closer. I got closer, uh, but then it kind of started to spread back out. So, um, you know, that was before that caution. So um, he, he probably was going to have us beat. You know, whoever got ahead off of turn two off of a restart was probably going to be the one that was going to be able to circle back around and, um, and, and take the checker. Go here in the middle of the Peter. There you go. Peter Strada, TSJ Sports. Kyle, you've had 102 Xfinity wins now. Is there any one that stands out over the other 101? Do you have a favorite Xfinity win? Um, not really. Um, you know, certainly, you know, the years of uh, 2004 all the way to probably 2013, 14, 15, somewhere in there, you're running against anywhere's between 8, 12, 16 cup guys, you know, and so people want to discredit all the wins all they want, but back in that day, you know, hell, back in 2004, I was 18 years old racing against all of them and, and beating them, you know, so, um, you know, it was pretty fun to, uh, to have some of the runs that I had back then. Uh, you look at Michigan 2004 beating Mark Martin, the series uh, winningest driver uh, at that time, and then, um, you know, you look back on a bunch of other victories with Jason Radcliffe and going and winning in Mexico and, um, you know, all, all the wins that we were able to score in dominating fashion and some of the ones we stole, uh, you know. You, there were very rare ones that we stole. There wasn't a lot of those because um, we didn't have to luck into them. We, we could flat out win them. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's just so many to, to talk about. We'll go over here. Chase McCabe, 102.5 The Game, Chasing Checkers Radio. Kyle, you just mentioned running against those cup drivers when you were coming up through the Xfinity Series. Do you think that NASCAR will rethink the rules, only five races in, in trucks and, and Xfinities, for, uh, since they're losing guys like you, they've lost guys like Harvick that you're moving on, and do you think they should relook at that? I don't know. Um, I could go a lot of different directions right now. That's a loaded question. Uh, I guess what I'll say is uh, I know it's Atlanta. I know it's 86 degrees outside and it's hot as hell, but those grandstands didn't look too damn good today. So sometimes names sell, and if you ain't got names, you ain't selling. We'll go to Alex, and then we'll go around the horn. All right. Yeah, we can start there and then, then to Alex. Cut. Yep. 
Hey, thank you, Kyle. Uh, Doug Turnbull for PRN and WSB Radio. Just wanted to ask, I guess, uh, you probably said a little bit about it on Twitter and stuff, but that, that to a lot of, uh, at least, I would say, in-depth or die-hard observers, seemed like classic Atlanta, where it, you know, it didn't just come down to the late restart. It was all about lane choice and, and multi-group racing. What, I guess, what do you have to say about with the product we saw today versus potentially what is going to be there in 2022? Yeah, I mean, barring, you know, getting into Hemrick and, and him crashing, uh, I sure am glad to win the final Xfinity Series race on a real Atlanta racetrack because the next one's just going to be a showpiece and it's going to be shit. So that's my, that's my point. I went out there today and just driving around looking at it. If they're going to narrow it up, what is it, 15 feet, whatever it is, that's the whole bottom groove. They're taking away the whole bottom groove, that whole first seam, that lane. We're not going to be able to run around here three wide. You know, you're going to be stuck at two wide. It's going to be as wide as Darlington. So uh, trying to run around here at 210 miles an hour, because if they don't put plates on it, you're going to be going way too fast. Um, just think about it. Everybody needs to just think. Ain't nobody thinking. Alex? Brains for sale, never used. Operating racetracks. You know, Alexandra with Charlotte Observer. Kyle, you mentioned how you know big names bring people out to the stands. Are, is there anything that you're going to miss about running the Xfinity Series, and why cap it after this season? I guess. Uh, yeah, I am going to miss it. I'm going to miss uh, the camaraderie with my my teams and all the people that I've worked with over the years. I mean, the list is countless. You know, um, just so many guys uh, and girls that, that we've worked with over the years at Joe Gibbs Racing, Hendrick Motorsports, Braun Racing when I ran there. So, um, you know, trying to develop talent, not only develop myself, but also develop the talent of crew chiefs and engineers and crew guys and all that stuff. I mean, those guys all go through the feeder system and work their way up, you know. So um, <laughs> I may or may not have gotten a few of them fired. Sorry. Um, but I've also gotten a hell of a lot more of them, you know, moved up and, um, you know, I work with them on Sundays, you know, so uh, it's been the cool part of the series and what it's all about um, and just getting laps and, and having something to do. You know, I remember when it was 2000, I don't know, I think it was my second year of Cup, so 2006, I really didn't have a whole lot of Xfinity stuff going and I asked Rick if I could run more and he was like, well, why? And I'm like, well, I'd, I'm here all weekend long. I got nothing to do on Saturdays. I might as well try to go out there and get better, you know, and improve myself in order to be, you know, what I need to be on Sundays. And, you know, to a point that can stop. Sure. Is that now? Well, it was probably a while ago, but um, I just enjoy it. I'm a racer. Racers are racers. They love to go race, you know. Um, doesn't matter if you're Kyle Larson and you go run sprint cars or midgets or whatever, and, you know, you're me and you go run Xfinity and truck because you have – teams that'll take you, sponsors that want you, and uh, the opportunities are there. You go run them. I'll go run super late models at times. I'd like to go run SRX, but I got shot out of that one. So, you know, it is what it is. Go back over here. Kyle, Joe Adji, Noon and Times Herald. How bad was the heat inside the race car today, and how does it compare to a cup car? Um, yeah, I mean, it's warm for sure. That right side window just kind of heat soaks the race car under yellow you know when everything kind of cools off a little bit but like the first two laps under yellow it's just really hot um you know because you don't have the fast air taking all the heat out from underneath the car the exhaust pipes are still hot everything's still hot so you got to bring all the temperatures down to kind of get everything to cool off so by the time you get a long yellow it's it's tolerable but um you know uh, it's you got to be uh mentally prepared in some of these situations where it's going to be hot races you got to come in with that that mindset also the the cool shirt helps a lot. Um, you know, this thing is, is certainly a, a lifesaver on the hot days. So um, that definitely helps too. Go to Nate and then Bob. So I want to get in the middle here, please. Thank you. Nate Ryan, NBC Sports. Kyle, when did you find out about the changes here for next year? Same time y'all did. Um, seem to have arrived at a moment where drivers aren't being consulted as much about those types of changes and that was kind of a topic of discussion last night after knoxville as well and kyle larson and uh denny both said you know they felt like there should be more communication what's your stance on that yeah no i i agree completely i i feel 
I feel that uh, our side doesn't get looked at whatsoever. Um, you know, from from our vantage point, you know, you're gonna you're gonna come here with fresh pavement with four degrees more banking. When they were here in 1997, they went around here wide open and set a track record of 197 miles an hour. You're gonna tell me that the next cars that we're gonna have with more tire, wider tire, everything, we're not gonna go faster? I mean, so we're, we're the ones that need to be consulted as well too a little bit. Um, you know, so it's just it, narrowing a racetrack. All we've done at every single racetrack that we've gone to over the years is try to widen the racing groove, right? What do you think the PJ1 bullshit's for? to widen the racing groove. We go to Charlotte, we spray this PJ1 stuff in lane two and three to make it wider. We go to Texas, we spray it in lanes two, three, four at Texas to widen it. I mean, what are we doing? Now we're gonna come here and run around here like Darlington? I, I, I just don't see it. And they want pack racing? You want pack racing too wide. Who's gonna pass? Where's the, where are the lanes gonna go? You know what I mean? Like you're gonna get to the straightaway and make it three wide and then try to blend back into two when you get to the corner? Simulation. Yeah, they've got it worked out. Why the disconnect right now between drivers and racetrack owners? Uh, because they can do whatever the hell they want to do because nobody holds them accountable. They took Bristol and tore Bristol apart and turned Bristol actually into a pretty racy racetrack. All the drivers loved it, but of course they would argue that the fans don't. So there's a divide on that. There's a divide on pleasing the fans and the grandstands and putting on a show and what that show is. And there's videos on YouTube, Google it. I think Mark Martin shared it on his Twitter earlier this week of Tony Stewart. We're in the racing business. You know, we race cars. There's gonna be times where a guy figures it out and he runs off, you know, that's racing. Uh, but they wanna be in the entertainment business and put on crashes and fireballs and everything else. And I've, I've, I have been in a race that I haven't walked out of before. And that sucks. And then I missed 11 after that, you know? So I know what it's like to get hurt. I know what it, the opportunity presents itself and coming to Atlanta with more banking, less racetrack to race does not sound appealing. Bob. Bob Parker's Fox Sports. To follow up on that, do you think well, both the Indy and the Cup cars will you end up drafting here next year? I mean, will it be, do you envision it like a Daytona or just high speed, double file, but no passing? Um, I, if I'm put, uh, you're asking me to do sim in my head, right? To simulate what's gonna happen. Um, trucks run around here in the springtime when it's cold out. Trucks run around here wide open for about two laps. So with fresh grip and everything else, they're gonna, they're gonna run around here wide open and they're gonna run around here pack style racing. It's, it's gonna be fast. Um, you know, they're, I don't know if you bring Daytona Talladega trucks here. I would, I would honestly think that you're, you're gonna have to look at that. Um, so Xfinity cars, will you have to look at that? Xfinity cars, they have, I still think they're going to be fast, man, because we are wide open at, at Texas through three and four. It's, it's going to be close um, to wide open. I still think you'll be a little bit out of the gas in the Xfinity cars with the lack of downforce, but the cup cars, they, they still don't know what aero package they got for the new cup car. So are we coming here with a 550 type package? I mean, it's, it's, you might as well just put the bigger blade on it that we have at the speedways and slow it down because you know you're, you know you're going to need to. And as far as today, can you take me through the restart with the 18? And I mean, he said he didn't. He said he knew, knew you were just trying to push him. But you know, when when you see that happen after he's led so many laps, and you know his situation. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, he got a better restart actually in the launch zone, and uh, got away from me a little bit. I got bumped from behind and pushed forward and, and caught back up to him. And uh, as we were getting towards turn one, um, you know, I kind of was shallowing left because I was watching the guy behind me making sure he wasn't going to duck out from behind me to put me three wide and so I was trying to run my lane and as such I hit Daniel right at the perfect moment right at that bump that that leads up into turn one and it kind of hit him at the same time he hit the bump at the same time it juked him a little bit and then um, he got touched by Almondinger I think was out there so that just then sent him for a ride so um, all things considered in a perfect world if if Daniel was two feet further left, nothing would have happened. You know, I would have bumped him straight, pushed him forward, and we would have went on and, and raced it out, you know, but um, that's racing. I mean, people would say I did it on purpose, but what do I need to do it on purpose for? Kid's going for his first win. I'm going for 102. I've been there, done that. I don't need it. It would certainly help him a hell of a lot more than it's going to 
help me and, and give the perception that now I have on that. So that's that. And we'll wrap it up here in the back. Uh, Tyler had 9-6 through FWRFC. Going back to this configuration of Atlanta, you've had a lot of success here in all three series, winning multiple times. Where does this track rank on your list of favorite places to race at? Uh, pretty high right now. Uh, come Monday, pretty pretty low. Um, you know, it's a fun place. I mean, we, we all say it. The drivers all say it. It's, it's challenging. It's difficult. You have to figure out how fast you can run, how hard you can push, and yet still try to save your tire and not, not burn the tires off of it. Um, you know, we saw that here in the springtime. I mean, Larson stunk the show, right? Was out ahead 15 seconds, but on the last run, Blaney ran him down, caught him. He, he burned his stuff up. Um, so, you know, it was um, an interesting, interesting race. Um, 500 miles here, that's probably too long. Um, but overall, this is a, one of the more fun tracks. I remember coming here in 2003, my first, uh, I think I ran is this my third Xfinity start ever? I think it was with Nemco. And uh, I made about four laps, I think, and then I blew up getting into three. So it wasn't a very long day. <laughs> but uh, I just remember how, how much fun it was then. And man, it's only gotten bumpier and, and more character since. And yeah, I get it. I mean, the asphalt's coming up. You can see chunks of it missing and stuff like that out there. But um, you know, it's time for a repave and, and whatnot. I, I don't disagree or don't discredit that front. but. The, the layout, I, I just, I can't, I can't get it in my mind that we want to go faster. So that's it. All right. Thank you, Kyle, for your time. Congratulations on the win.